Okay, now that you've watched the video on enzymes, let's go on to the next slide. Let's talk a little bit about the organs of your digestive system. And these are the organs that your digestive system uses to break down food. There are two parts of our digestive system. There's the first part, which is the digestive tract, and then there are the accessory organs. Major organs of your digestive tract, which include your mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus are shown. We've got our mouth, esophagus, stomach here is like a J shape, okay? Small intestine and large intestine, rectum, and anus. Those are all shown. The tongue, teeth, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are the accessory organs. They're called accessory organs because they aid in digestion, but they're not part of the specific tract. Food does not pass through them on the way through the system, okay? The, the digestive tract is where food passes through, so it obviously goes through your mouth, esophagus, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, okay? It goes through those areas. Liver, gallbladder, pancreas, etc., they do other things, such as produce or store enzymes and other chemicals that help break down food as it passes through the digestive tract. So they're kind of an accessory or a helpful thing to the digestive tract. Let's start off with the mouth. Both types of digestion, mechanical and chemical, occurred in the mouth. Mechanical digestion happens when you chew your food with your teeth and mix it with your tongue. Chemical digestion, on the other hand, is when you're adding um, a chemical sunshine, we talked about this before, so with the addition of a watery substance called saliva, which contains water, mucus, and an enzyme that aids in the breakdown of starch into sugar. That's how chemical digestion begins in the mouth. Every day, there are about 1.5 liters, okay? That's almost, you guys have heard of two liter bottles of pop? 1.5 liter is three-fourths of a <laughs> bottle of pop that size of saliva are produced each day by salivary glands in your mouth. That's a huge amount of saliva. Food mixed with the saliva becomes a soft mass and moved is moved to the back of your mouth by your tongue. It is then swallowed and passes through the esophagus. So as we can see over here, we have our salivary gland, we've got our tongue, we've got our teeth, we've got some more salivary glands and ducts, which is how the saliva gets into our mouth. Our esophagus is about 25 centimeters long there's not any digestion that really takes place in esophagus, but you could consider it some um, mechanical a little bit because the smooth muscles in the wall of the esophagus move the food downward with a squeezing action. So that squeezing could be seen as mechanical digestion a little bit, but technically not part of the digestive process. Right here is our esophagus. The waves of muscle contractions are called peristalsis, and they move food through the entire digestive tract. So we have peristalsis happening in our esophagus, we have peristalsis happening in our large and small intestines, rectum, all the way to where we expel it out of our anus. Secretions from the mucous glands in the wall of the esophagus keep the food moist. And then it's dumped into, the food's dumped into the stomach, which is a muscular bag right here, this J shape. Mechanical indigestion and Digestion and chemical digestion both take place in the stomach. Chemically, the food is mixed with enzymes and strong digestive solutions such as hydrochloric acid solution to help break it down. Specialized cell in the stomach's walls release about two liters of hydrochloric acid solution each day. Can you guys imagine? You have hydrochloric acid, about a pot bottle's worth of hydrochloric acid dumped in your tummy every day from the stomach's walls. The stomach also produces a mucus. The reason why it produces this mucus is because that acid is hard on your stomach. So it produces this mucus, which makes the food more slippery, and it's going to help protect the stomach from the strong digestive solution so it's not eating away at your stomach. Food is changed into the stomach into a thin, watery liquid called chyme. Okay, slowly chyme moves out of your stomach and into your small intestine. As chyme leaves your stomach, it enters the first part of your small intestine called the duodenum or duodenum. Here, in the duodenum, bile, a greenish fluid from the liver, is added. What do you think the bile does? That bile is going to help break stuff down. So the acidic solution from the stomach makes the large fat particles float to the top of the chyme, and then the bile breaks up those large fat particles. So that bile from the liver is going to break up those large fat particles, similar to the way a detergent breaks up grease. Chemical digestion of the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats occurs when a digestive solution from the pancreas is mixed in. This solution contains bicarbonate ions and enzymes. 
Your pancreas also makes insulin, a hormone that allows glucose to pass from the bloodstream into your cells. I'm going to take a moment here, guys and gals, to remind you that if you need to pause this at any time to write this stuff down, please do so. Okay, so more about the small intestine. The wall of the small intestine has many ridges and folds. These folds are called, covered with finger-like projections called villi. So here is our small intestine, and then you can see in here all those little, well, finger-like projections. Those are the villi. And in the villi, there's lymph vessels and capillaries. Remember we talked about capillaries last chapter? And that's going to be allowed to collect stuff. So the nutrients will move into the blood vessels within the villi. From here, the blood transports the nutrients to all cells of your body. So there's, there's where the circulatory system comes into play here. Peristalsis will continue to force the remaining undigested and unabsorbed materials slowly into the large intestine. When the chyme enters the large intestine, it is still a thin, watery mixture. The large intestine is going to then absorb the water from the undigested mass, which helps maintain homeostasis. And remember, homeostasis is that centralized, normal, balanced state that we are in. So it's going to absorb some of that water so our body cells can have some more water. And so after the excess water is absorbed, the remaining undigested materials becomes more solid. Because if you take out the water or something, it's going to be more solid than it is liquid. Then, muscles in the rectum, which is the last section of the large intestine, and the anus, which controls the release of semi-solid waste from the body in the form of feces. Last but not least, a thing to think about in our digestive system. There are many types of bacteria that live in our body. Some of these bacteria live in a relationship that is beneficial or helpful to both the bacteria and our bodies. The bacteria in our large intestine feed on in indigested material like cellulose and make the vitamins you need, such as vitamin K and two different B vitamins. Bacterial action is also going to convert bile pigments into new compounds. The breakdown of the intestinal materials by bacteria produces gas. So that is kind of the end all of our thing. Okay, we have made feces, we produce gas, there you go. So, um, one more thing before I wrap up. Don't forget that after this video and after you have the notes done, you'll need to go to the next slide on blend space where there will be a Google form to take your quiz over today's material. Thanks.